Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I am doing two baits. So we're doing our first soft plastic and I'm bringing you to my soft plastic station. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll, we'll do some two baits. Uh, they're hand dips, uh, so we're not injection molding these. Uh, and uh, the material is really easy to get. Um, the main thing you need is metal rod. I think this is like 3 sixteenths of an inch. Uh, somewhere around there, a quarter of an inch uh, or less, that's what those are. Um, so you can buy those at the hardware store and uh, I, was, I just bought a nice big length and I chopped it up into small pieces. Um, I'm doing four at a time. You can do more or less. But uh, that's what we're doing today is uh, two baits, hand dipped two baits uh, from Remelt. Uh, so this isn't even uh, clear plastisol adding coloring to it. We're just going to go ahead and take old lures and remelt them down. Uh, also, I wanted to remind you while I'm at it uh, about the uh, 1,000 subscriber goal. Uh, we're trying to get to 1,000 subscribers, and when we do, I'm going to make a 4-inch uh, swim bait and give it away to one of the 1,000 subscribers. So uh, help me get to my goal of 1,000 subscribers, and we'll make that swim bait. And I'll actually have a detailed uh, video on the 1,000 subscriber swim bait uh, when we get there. All right, so the primary thing you need in a soft plastic station is some Pyrex melting containers. You need remelt plastic. Uh, this can be old lures that you've remelted down. So I actually buy the, the sprues, the leftover parts, and remelt them down for my own lures. One other thing you need is a microwave or a stovetop. But that's really all you need besides molds and, you know, whatever you're going to do soft plastics in. One other thing I do recommend is getting a thermometer. You don't have to have this. You can do it by eye. The thermometer does help kind of keep everything on the level. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, melt our plastic. I usually do it about a minute at a time. Stir it, another minute, stir it. And in between stirring, so this stuff is just barely starting to melt. Just kind of stir stuff in a little bit. I'm using uh, old popsicle sticks for stir rods. They should, they're clean. <laughs> a couple quick safety things real quick. So, of course, we're heating up plastisol. This stuff is going to get up to like the 350 degree temperature range. So it's going to be extremely hot and it will burn you really bad. Do not get it on you. It's best to wear shoes, full clothed shoes. Uh, it's also best to wear pants. Um, you can make your choice on if you're going to wear long sleeves or not, gloves. Um, just be aware, this stuff burns you really bad and it's a bad burn. Uh, don't get it on you. You know, if you're not comfortable working with this, don't do this. So I've got some boiling. Uh, that's because my plastic has got moisture in it. But for the most part, if it's got excess moisture in it, it's going to bubble like this. And unless you have a vacuum cha chamber, you're not going to be able to get the bubbles up. So what we're simply going to do is just dip these rods in here. Ooh, yeah. There's a bunch of uh, glitter at the bottom. Stir that up a little better. All right. So we're gonna let this drip till it stops. All right. So in the height of your tube is gonna be dependent on how much plastic you have in here. So you may have to top it off after a couple dips, but these are gonna get multiple dips. See if you can see that. Like I said, we just kind of let it drip until it's done. Oh no. Well, that helping hand didn't help. We got plenty of time to work with this because it uh, it's such a big mass of plastic. It stays hot pretty long. You really want all the drips to be kind of done. Off. Another one here. Here we go. All right. Now what I'm doing once I get done with these, I'm putting them in the helping hands. This one failed on me, so I gotta retighten that before I use it. But I'm just letting these cool down a little bit before I redip them again. Be sure to check your hanging tubes to make sure they're not got weird drips coming off. You don't want those weird drips. All right. So now we've got the first coat on. We're gonna do another one. I believe this is still hot enough to do another one. 
You kind of want to do it fast. Like the litter's not suspending all that well, so I give it a little bit of stir. So, but yeah, there you go. I'm going to go ahead and re-dip this one more time. See how that's getting much, much thicker. I don't really want it super thick like that, so try to get as much of it off as I can. Well, these are hand dips, so they're not going to be perfect like some of the mold injected ones. We're going to let these four cool, um, and then we'll come back and I'll show you how to do a double colored tube. Basically, you just want to be able to pull these off. I'm just going to work around them. Working down. There we go. May it released. And they're kind of suctiony until you get the air down to them. There we go. All right. So there we have a completed tube. All right. For a two color, you're going to need two Pyrex. This is tomato red. Uh, so. This is going to be kind of a red uh, with a green top. I topped it off a little bit more so it should be about the same height. You want these two uh, cups to be about the same. It's actually a little taller which will be fine. Let's check the heat. Yeah, so I'm at 325. You want to be around 325, 350. We're going to go ahead and do like before, just dipping it. Like I said, you got plenty of time to work with this. Don't get in a hurry and burn yourself. All right, so as you can see, I've got them single dipped. Now that's really all we're gonna do with the first color. So I've got all this plastic left. We're just gonna set it aside. We can reuse that. And I'm gonna go ahead and reheat my second color, which is my green again. 357, that's about where you want it. Much better. Now you can dip it so that you stop on your second coat much shallower and that'll give you a different tail color and inside color from the tip. All right, to finish these off, we're just going to take a razor blade. I'm actually going to cut off that little excess and then we're going to recycle all this. So. Now what you do next is up to you. I'm going to do 50-50, so I want these to be split. Kind of the split tail like that guy. So what I'm gonna do, run this at a steep angle and just push down. Again, we're just using a box cutter. Throw that in there. Let me spin it around. You can cut it from the back side. Now you have a kicking paddle tail there. Or, you know, a kicking tail. So this will be somewhat like the, uh, what do they call them, beetles the beetle skirts. All right, so if we want to do like your typical skirt like this, where it's got a bunch of lit fingers coming down, we're gonna end up doing, move this around so, I guess it's about halfway. Make sure not to cut yourself. Divide it right there. We're gonna roll it over. Divide it right there. Now we just section them off. Right there. Right there. And you can take these individually and make a bit smaller if you want to. Some of these I will because they're pretty chunky. Okay. Now, you can also make a jig to put a bunch of razor blades in at, at the same time and just cut it all at once. That would work a lot better than what I'm doing here. But this is what I got. So this is what I'm going to do.
and this can get tedious depending on how thin you want these guys all right that's good enough little tube there all right so that one looks a lot nicer and that red peeks out from underneath kind of gives it a I don't know, fleshy color I like it so we got these so you can see how that two color works there I like it there we go and there we have our two baits a little bit smaller than these uh, they'll actually work a little bit better for me since I do mostly smallmouth fishing they'll go after these smaller ones a little bit faster than they will the other ones so let me know if you have any questions like I said be very careful with this this is very hot and dangerous don't want to spill this on yourself don't want to get it on your hands it'll burn you really bad but it is very rewarding to catch fish off of homemade soft plastics There's one. Got him. Oh. All right. Uh, finally caught another one. I'm gonna say there's gotta be something in there. Oh, he came off. That's what I get for trying to get the <laughs> camera going. We're good.